Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing something from right here, from planet Earth. One of the most incredible organisms on our planet that's considered to be the largest and the most massive organism on Earth. But also the organism that has recently been talked about in one of the really interesting articles you can find in the description, because it's also been threatened by a lot of different things. But what exactly is this organism, and what exactly do we know about it? And even though our mental image of the largest animal is usually something like this, a blue whale, the reality is that it's something entirely different. It's actually this right here, and this is called Pando, a colony of clones that essentially produce what's known as an aspen tree. And because every single component here is genetically identical to each other, it essentially produces this extremely massive colony with the word pando itself meaning I spread in Latin. And even though in theory, things like for example superorganisms, so here we're talking about termites, ants, bees and so on, could also be considered to be extremely large in size and in mass, unlike termites whose mound you see right here, the species of aspens that's mostly common to North America is actually extremely different in that it's literally a single genetic organism that mostly lives underground and is entirely represented by the root system, with the visible part on top with the trees themselves simply being temporary body parts that occasionally have to be replaced because of one reason or another. Ok, but what about the Great Barrier Reef? It's also been called the largest organism. But in this case it's actually not a single organism at all, it's a collection of very very different species all living in the same environment making this more of a community of different species than a single species like aspen. Now I personally always confused aspen for birch tree because they do look kind of similar, but unlike birch trees, aspen tend to grow in colonies. And unlike other trees, they've also developed a lot of different adaptations in order to survive a lot of different environments. For example, they developed a very specific shape of a flattened leaf to prevent the damage to the trunk if there was a lot of wind. In other words, because of the shape of the leaf, the tree itself doesn't really sway as much. And just like a lot of other trees, in the winter, in order to avoid damage from the snow, they shed their leaves and then regrow them in the following spring. On top of this, they also have a very interesting adaptation in their bark. Their bark is photosynthetic, meaning that they can also photosynthesize even in the winter when there are no leaves. And that means that even in the winter, these trees can grow and become larger. And also unlike some of the other trees, the bark here contains very tiny pores for gas exchange, which is extremely similar to what you usually find in leaves of different trees. So this entire organism is just very very unusual and very different from a typical tree you usually find somewhere in your garden. And even though in theory, giant sequoia or giant redwood is usually considered to be the most massive single tree, Biologically speaking, because all of the aspens are genetic clones with an entirely interconnected root system, if you were to combine their entire mass, they do actually grow dramatically larger and more massive. With the current known record holder being located in Utah and simply known as Pando, with a total mass of about 6000 metric tons. Although interestingly, by size, something else beats this as well. A type of seagrass found in the Mediterranean very close to the island of Ibiza that's simply known as Posidonia Oceanica or Neptune grass and it does seem to form a much larger organism with a total of size of about 8 kilometers or 5 miles across. And it also seems to be one of the largest such organisms on the planet. The current estimate for its age is about 100,000 years old. But the most well studied and well understood of these organisms is of course Pando. And here the age is estimated to be about 11,000 to maybe 15,000 years old, simply based on the assumption that this particular organism very likely did not exist during the last glaciation period. This entire area was covered by a tremendously large glacier for many thousands of years, so it's sort of assumed that no trees were around back then. But obviously Pando is just one organism out of many different aspen colonies in North America. A lot of them are much smaller in size and much younger, and chances are there is actually an older and even bigger organism somewhere where we haven't really explored yet, but at the moment it's still the largest and the most massive aspen colony known to us. 
And the way that this Aspen colony operates and why it was so successful is actually extremely interesting. So as I mentioned, it really all has to do with roots. With the Aspen root system being particularly resilient to a lot of different environmental conditions. And specifically, they actually rely on forest fires. Because of their location underground, they're not affected by the forest fires, but it does remove a lot of the competition, such as for example these other trees located very close to aspen trees, which then allows the roots to spread even further and create larger and larger colonies. And the trees themselves here do not actually even live that long. On average, a typical aspen tree only lives about 130 years, which is somewhat different from a lot of other trees that can live for hundreds and even thousands of years. After about 130 years, aspen trees will normally shrivel and are replaced by new sprouts which then become larger trees. Which is why it's somewhat difficult to determine the true age of a typical aspen colony. The tree rings in this case do not provide any necessary information to determine the true age of the entire colony. Although calling it a colony is still a bit of a misnomer. It's really just a single organism. It's a really really large root. With the occasional tree sticking out here and there. But for Pando, there are 47,000 of such trees. So that's why it's the most massive organism on the planet. But obviously, just like the Great Barrier Reef, for example, it also provides an important ecosystem for a lot of other animals and a lot of other species living in this region. And because of this, Pando or a lot of other similar organisms can actually be used to, for example, assess the effects of the climate change. And so by watching various changes and various transitions in the trees themselves, it becomes possible to try to learn more about how this will affect other trees as well. And so today Pando is actively used to try to assess the effects of climatic changes. But it seems that it's not the climate that's actually killing the trees here, and it's not the climate that's reducing the size and the mass of the entire colony. It's actually deer. Surprisingly, a lot of studies in the last few years discovered that it's deer and elk that have been basically eating pando alive, and reducing its total mass, also preventing it from creating new sprouts or replacing its trees. And because the trees themselves can only last for 130 years or so, and the organism depends on replacing these old trees with new sprouts, it's really this right here that's been the biggest problem for this particular organism. And that's mostly because these guys are no longer around to take care of that problem. And so because of the loss of different predators in the region, deer is practically everywhere and are essentially eating the largest organism away. And so only this area where no deer can access, we actually have new sprouts and new trees being grown. Everything else right now is completely barren with only old trees. But that's just of course one of many problems that the tree has faced in the last few thousands of years and it's definitely a problem that it's going to survive and find a solution to by itself. It doesn't really need us. But because of the complexity of this organism and also because it's still a record holder for the biggest mass, a couple of years ago, back in 2019, a new group was created called Friends of Pando with the only purpose being education and preservation of this really really unusual and somewhat cool organism. The world's largest tree, the world's most massive organism, and possibly even one of the oldest organisms on the planet. With the website that you can find in the description containing a lot of interesting images and a lot of really interesting articles talking about Pando in a lot more detail and explaining exactly what the scientists here are doing. But I guess for now, it's just kind of curious to see where all of this goes in the next few decades. Because this particular colony was able to survive a lot of different wildfires, a lot of disease, and a lot of different animals that grazed on it before, these impressive and resilient colonies are also particularly interesting to scientists studying the effects of the climate change. Because these are the most resilient organisms on the planet able to survive some of the harshest conditions, by observing the changes that these trees go through, we'll be able to assess how the environmental changes might affect everything else as well. Although I guess for now that's pretty much all I wanted to mention in this particular video, and you can learn more about Pando and a lot of similar organisms from the links in the description below. It's definitely the most impressive tree on the planet, and it's definitely one of the most intriguing organisms we've discovered to date. And hopefully all of us will get to visit this organism and appreciate it sometime in the future. But for now, that's all I wanted to mention. 
Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.